Hello and welcome to In the Studio. My name is Bryce Parker and I will be your host for this episode. On this program we will be discussing the growing issue of climate change and how the young people and concerned citizens of Davis are taking action in our community to create a grassroots movement to combat the effects of climate change. In, on September 20th, 2019, students around the world took to the streets to demand action on climate change. Here in Davis, over a thousand marched to City Hall and Central Park. In addition to the protests, students delivered letters to local elected officials and school officials demanding action on the issue. Today, I'm joined in the studio with Megan Phelps, the chair of the Climate Reality Project at UC Davis. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So, Megan, first I'd like to talk about just the general issue of climate change. Why now are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of students just saying enough is enough, we need to get change now? Well, um, a lot of people are asking that question with the rising awareness about the issue um, without really understanding the science behind it. And last um, fall, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report saying that uh, median estimates project that we will reach a tipping point um, in 2030, at which point we will have no, um, we will reach a tipping point and um, be unable to reverse the effects of climate change and see a hothouse earth scenario. Um, and also, more recently, last week, 11,000 scientists stepped out of the science objectivity and declared a climate emergency. So it's clear that we are in a crisis. Okay, so for the people at home, can you sort of tell people what exactly does, uh, you know, so about 10 years from now, we're going to reach a tipping point where there's sort of no going back. Is that right? Right. And what does this, the no going back scenario kind of look like? What does a hothouse Earth look like? I've heard like hothouse planets like Venus. Is that what we're dealing with or uh, something? Can you just, yeah, give me the science here. Yeah, so um, at that point, um, CO2 levels and um, the temperature of the Earth will be so high that um, feedback loops, positive feedback loops, which are self-reinforcing, will continue on and increase warming um, so that we can't recover from them. Like, for example, melting Arctic ice, which usually reflects sunlight, will stop reflecting sunlight. Um, which leads to more melting, which leads to less reflecting sunlight. Um, and so that's one example. Okay, and could you tell me about uh, how your organization, the Climate Reality Project, has both a national and a, a local aspect, and you're the chair of the uh, local part at UC Davis. So can you tell me the goals of both the national organization and more specifically what your organization's doing here at UC Davis and in Davis in general? So Climate Reality Project is a national organization founded by former Vice President Al Gore and um, their model is solving the climate crisis by spreading awareness. So they do um, trainings throughout the world um, during the year to get people comfortable making presentations and talking about climate change. So after doing a presentation in Los Angeles last year, I decided to start a chapter at UC Davis. Um, and we, ha we can have more local level um, goals um, surrounding climate action. So for example, we have a couple campaigns this year. One is Get Out the Vote. Um, one is a K through 12 climate education program. Um, we also have an on-campus educational uh, campaign and, um, and then also with recognition of the effects of animal agriculture on the environment, a um, sustainable diet campaign. Okay, and on, on your website I read a little bit about your organization and I saw that you're trying to get people from across the political spectrum involved in talking about climate change and I just wanted to know what, what does that look like? Yeah, so um, climate change 
has become a polarized issue, but it hasn't always been that way. And it, in order for us to make progress to solve this existential threat, um, it's, we have to have a collaboration between all sides of the political spectrum, which means um, mobilizing Republicans, Democrats, everywhere in between. And recent polls are showing that young Republicans are concern more concerned about climate change than old Republicans. So while party preference is still the best indicator of concern about climate change, um, there is increasing awareness among people in my age group. Okay. And can you tell me a little more about, you mentioned you're working with K through 12 students. Can you tell me a little bit about what that looks like? I'm assuming it's at schools in Davis. Uh, what schools are you going to and what's sort of the plan for that? So as of now, we haven't gone to schools, but okay. we're developing um, different educational things, including art projects and making climate change um, relevant to young students because their futures are um, at risk. So um, right now we have um, an event planned um, coming up and we are trying to have a youth component mm -hmm. so that parents can come and have their kids um, engaged with the issue. Um, really with the recognition that it's an intergenerational problem. Yeah. Yes, when I was at the climate strike on what, September 20th, they, there were a lot of, there were people of all ages there from, I, I think, elementary school, maybe kindergarten, all mm -hmm. the way to uh, people who were 90, 95. Um, so I was wondering, can you speak to that day and what it was like um, to see that number of people coming out um, from all generations uh, concerned about climate change. Yeah, that was, it was an amazing day in Davis and all around the world. People were marching with that same um, dynamic of a uh, wide spectrum of ages. And something that I find really inspiring about this movement is that it's youth driven. So the people who will be affected by the decisions made today are leading the movement, unlike um, pretty much any other movement we've seen. Yes, and I'd like to sort of get to the, the goals of the movement. Um, I read about you group delivering um, letters to some officials at UC Davis mm -hmm. demanding changes. That, that's true, right? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know about that and sort of your experience with dealing with people in power and communicating to yeah, politicians, leaders of schools and mm -hmm. that sort of thing and where you found that your voice was being heard and where uh, people in positions of power could maybe make some improvements in their listening abilities. Mm -hmm. So um, last winter or last fall um, I helped pass a climate emergency resolution at UC Davis um, which was the f through the UC Davis Student Senate and it was the first of its kind um, that I know of in the world, but I mean, not to say that there are no other climate emergency resolutions, but in a college campus. Um, and then last spring, the UC, actually, I think over the summer, mm -hmm. the UC regents declared a climate emergency and um, pledged to divest from fossil fuels. So they said that it was because of fiduciary responsibility mm -hmm. um, and because fossil fuel investments are becoming financially unstable. But um, in reality, I think it's more accurate to say that it was because of pressure from students, mm -hmm. um, w email, emailing them, writing them letters. Um, throughout the whole UC system, there is a fossil-free divestment movement. So in that way, they have been responsive, um, though not explicitly. Um, and then more recently, I went last week to um, the California Teachers Union, mm -hmm. um, CalSTRS, um, their pen pension fund fund is heavily invested in fossil fuels and they're considering revoking their investments. So I testified in front of them um, and it has been a really long, that was not the first testimony. Um, so in that way, oh, there are a lot of people who are reluctant to, as we can see, um, yeah. take action. All right, and so with the progress with UC Davis, uh, 
getting them to divest from fossil fuels? Is that just UC Davis or is that the UC system as a whole that's doing this? That's the whole UC system as a whole. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's great. Yeah. yeah. It would seem that, uh, especially with long-term investments, that investing in fossil fuels not only is immoral, but also considering the way things are going, maybe a bad investment. Yes, um, oh. that was part of also the Calster's divestment um, hearing. People were presenting evidence that they've lost millions of dollars just even in the past because of fossil fuel investments. Yes. So. Okay, and let's talk briefly about um, your, I want to know a bit about uh, the work with, have you worked with the City Council of Davis on anything? I want to know a little bit about what has Davis divested from fossil fuels, and do you know anything about that? Are they, are, is our city being funded by fossil fuels in any way? What's, <laughs> what's going on there? Um, I'm not totally sure about that. Right. I was at a climate emergency resolution um, hearing in Davis um, in, I believe, January of 2019. Oh. Um, so. Davis has declared a climate emergency, and they have a um, probably one of the most specific climate emergency resolutions. Um, even though London, Berkeley, um, let's see, Hoboken, New Jersey, city, a bunch of cities throughout. I think actually the entire United Kingdom, as well, has de have declared climate emergencies. Um, but you, but Davis's climate emergency resolution has specific provisions. I'm not um, in literate on them, but okay. um, so that's kind of the status of UC Davis as a city, or Davis as a city. <laughs> right. All right, and uh, let's see. I'd like to also, let's go back to your organization. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do people uh, get, in, get involved with your organization? Where can they... Uh, do you mostly take just UC Davis students, or is it something that the whole community can get involved in? We really appreciate having community support because it is such a big issue. So we have a lot of events coming up, um, and you can learn more at on our Facebook page, which is Facebook slash Climate Reality at UCD. And um, we update our events um, on that page. So definitely like us and um, come to our events. Right. Um, yeah. And I found out about you through Cool Davis. And so I was wondering, other organizations like Cool Davis, is that something your organization is affiliated with that is also a good uh, place for people to find out about stuff in Davis? Yeah. So Cool Davis is a great organization um, that we partner with and we support each other's um, events, I would say. Um, we also support other UC Davis groups like uh, the right. Davis Sunrise Movement, mm -hmm. the Zero Waste and Sustainability Club, um, and then we're also partnering with International House for some events coming up. All right, well, mm -hmm. thank you. And thank, thank you. you for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for and having me. And it's been wonderful today that we've been able to have this discussion about climate change, and I would like to end it here, and thank you so much. Thank you. All right.